Welcome back to Inside Politics. Today we'll be looking at the Nigerian Army Armed Forces Remembrance Day. Um, that took place during the week in Ibadan. It was a week-long activity. Part of that ceremony was the an interview, interactive interview, uh, interactive session that selected media chief executives had with the chief of army staff. Yours sincerely was there, and we'll be diving into some of the things he said. Nature of our security challenges that confront us in Nigeria is such that uh, we have to fight the battle of narratives. And so it's not the Nigerian army that puts the narrative, trying to correct you, Mr. Apache. But you are the channel that has helped us put the narrative out there. So we recognize you as such and thank you. We we would like to sit with you, have an interaction as often as time will permit. Maybe every week, maybe every other week. But we know that uh, you have other engagements, you are busy people. We also have uh, our own core mandate to focus on. And that is why we are interaction uh, usually far and in between. So, but we will take correction. Dialogue. We will try as much as possible to invite time to so that we we'll sit down. It may not be a media chat, maybe it's maybe other activities, but we we'll find time that needs to be and agree and exchange views. On uh, what my feelings were on making my appointment was announced, I will borrow from uh, the words of uh, my immediate uh, to the immediate past to the Because I had to work as the chief of operation up until the last minute that I took over as the chief of Amistad. So I was in the office that fateful morning, the 19th of June this year. And uh, I worked all through, followed my schedule till about uh, 1840 hours, closed from the office when my first year. And I drove home and uh, had my early dinner. And I was sitting down to watch uh, the Chinese news at 7. So yes, my television is only in China. <laughs> so the world and then uh, was through that channel that I got uh, news I was home alone and I knew that uh, all the people would come around to congratulate that for this So I had to leave the house uh, not for any negative feeling but because I didn't want to create attention on that street. I was not living in the I had neighbors, and uh, if you are very familiar with what, what the officer's quarter is, especially in Niger Bara, we have limited spaces. I, did, I didn't want cars to clog the street. I didn't want uh, the place to turn into a spectacle. So I had to leave and uh, went somewhere and stayed till almost. 0 to 0 to your before the I came back home expecting that I would not meet anybody at home. <laughs> and yet I met people still waiting for me at home. So I had to sit down with them and uh, took my leave to go and uh, rest my eyes at about 0 to 100. So I was elated, I was happy, I got calls from uh, all over the world. So that was how the, 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 the day went. Well. Director of Operations at Army Headquarters, I served as a GOC in the field and two different divisions. I was still of operation. So I'm quite seized with uh, the happening in all the other operations. And don't die in the memory lane, about 
three years back. I'm saying the situation is improved. We will still have uh, the challenges of uh, terrorism in the northeast, but not at the scale that we had in 2014, 2015, and even coming down to 2016, 2017, and 2018. We have experienced banditry, kidnapping for ransom in the northwest. But our troops are grappling with the situation and they are on top of it. They have done a lot to check this, this marauding criminal element and dissident and stop their migration from the northwest to parts of the north central, especially in the United States. We have uh, the challenge of uh, farmers and crisis and uh, some level of uh, kidnapping in some North Central states, coupled with uh, ethnic, religious crisis, sometimes on the plateau part of Southern Kaduna. And uh, in the Southeast, the agitation from the state of the Afra is still born, and uh, in the South South, people are still stealing crude oil and vandalizing the nation critical oil infrastructure. In the Southwest, it's not uh, up here yeah? because. Uh, even along uh, the Lagos and Bada Express, bad records of uh, kidnapping and uh, arm dropping, another low level from the Southwest. But um, looking back some years, I think the situation is improving. And uh, some factors account for this improvement that uh, we have recorded in our cities, especially in the northeast The government, especially the middle class government, invested in the procurement of military hardware. And I was speaking to some scholars that were writing memoir the immediate past has changed a lot of And I said that these days, then, a few months back, that Yami was taking delivery of my resistance and push of the technique in Montreal. And we're taking delivery of general purpose machine guns and other heavy machine guns in thousands. And we're taking delivery of ammunition, all caliber in media. This procurement of military hardware went a long way in helping to stabilize the situation in the Northeast. In, in the Northeast, pardon me. In the Northwest, the we have had a collaboration with uh, critical stakeholders, especially the media and government officials and uh, our royal fathers and uh, other critical elements of uh, society. And they helped us a lot to combat the menace of uh, banditry and kidnapping, even though we have not completely, completely eradicated it. As the chief of operations, as the director of operations, I used to do a check map of uh, the security environment. And I know that uh, when it comes to the rainy season, there's often a spike in criminality in the activities of uh, dissident groups, especially in the Northwest and even in the Northeast. And 
this year, 2023, looking at the figure, I can boldly tell you that it has been stable despite that I expected did not happen. For those of you that were at the Nigerian Army celebration in the way, I know Mr. Patrick was there, I know my boy was there. The attack on the uh, JP impacted negatively on our celebration in the way. So just looking back a year from now, you can quite agree with me that you have taken some steps forward. But we're not resting on our words. We understand the weight of the expectation of our Nigerians. We know our responsibility as the people's army. So we strive to do more. And under my leadership as the chief of army staff, I pledge to Nigeria that we will work as simply as possible to ensure that peace, stability, and orderliness return to every known and crime of Nigeria. The Nigerian political environment is dynamic and unpredictable. With everybody playing their part, the question on everybody's lips is how come our leaders are not providing the necessary needed purposeful leadership? As he depend them, he does with us. As he does with us, he go depend. Hey, yeah, yeah. So who do we blame? The leaders or the followers? Join Chris Kenden Wandu CKN as he speaks with the movers and shakers in the Nigerian political arena on Inside Politics Inside with CKN. Politics with CKN. Every Friday at 8 p.m. exclusive to Silver TV and Silver News 24. It's a must watch. Inside Politics with CKN. Speaking truth to power. My philosophy of command as the chief of army staff is to transform the Nigerian army into a well-trained, equipped, and highly motivated force towards achieving our constitutional responsibility in the joint environment. Taking a look at uh, the security challenges that confront us in all the geopolitical zones. I'm focused, I, let me say, I read the news of Mr. President from an MG. And uh, as often as possible, the President has said it, that the nation is leading. The money is not just there to do what we used to do in the past. That is why they have been the mover of West of City. That's why they are talking about uh, the, the floated exchange rate and they are talking about so many other reforms because the economy is bleeding and the revenue is not forthcoming. And I quite understand that about 80% of the nation revenue comes from the oil and gas sector. And of the, most of our oil and gas infrastructure are located in the South Africa region. Leaning on the renewed hope agenda of Mr. President, the army under my watch will work to stamp out oil thefts, pipeline vandalism in the Niger Delta region. I will not lose focus of the banditry in the because I know people desire to go back to farm. I know people want to live normally as Nigerians, not a violent spirit. So we will work to defeat the bandits, the kidnappers that operate fully in our communities. We will work to entrench the stability that we have achieved in the Northeast region. We want to have a situation where people can wake up by the 2 a.m. In those days, Trucks transport fish from Baga to Nicha, and they leave Baga maybe around 0 to 100 hours in the morning. So we want to come back to that area 
and also we want to return back to the area where people live peacefully on the plateau and part of southern Kaduna and places where we are currently experiencing security challenges. I will focus on the situation in the Niger Delta region in line with the mandate and what the drive of uh, the current government is, but I'm not going to lose focus of what is happening in other state institutions. And I'm uh, still talking about uh, the activities of uh, the criminal elements. I agree that uh, the threat that confronts us is complex, is adaptive, but so it is with uh, non state actors all over the world. So we are not playing catch up. We are thinking to our solution. And we are doing all we can. So if you are procuring equipment, for example, you are procuring equipment, it's not necessary to combat or to confront the threats that we are facing today. But we are thinking of what would the threats develop or more into in five, ten years' time. So we are thinking, and uh, we are not playing catch up at all. So we are working to not only confront the today's threat, but also the evolving and future threat. So many NGOs are played in the markets. But I also understand, just like uh, Mr. <laughs> that there are different elements of national power. And so I'm a soldier and I want to remain one. But I want to remain and see what the other elements of national power bring on board confront the challenges that face us as a nation. The army do not license entry and we do not regulate their activities. We work with them and where they are concerned, we have sat down with them and expressed those concerns. 